This is the Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Hi everyone, my name is Eric Clausell and I am a Starlight Express alumni. Um, this is really fun to be a part of this. My Starlight Express journey began, I'm embarrassed to say this because it was so long ago, uh, in 1987, I believe, um, were the additions for the original Bochum Company. And um, I did the skating workshop with, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot, who I, I, I'm even blanking on the name of who did the workshop, but um, I did the skating workshop, so I had been preparing for auditioning for Electra, um, which I went on to play the, in the original Bochum Company. Mm-hmm. And the auditions were really fun and comical. I've got some funny stories about my audition. Uh, my first audition, I decided that I was going to do a cartwheel on my skates. And I'd never tried a cartwheel on my skates. I was just feeling like, oh, yeah, I'm in the groove. I can do this. Uh, I I fell so bad, my skate broke, and the people behind the table were like, oh, my God, what just happened? <laughs> They're like, uh, dude, why don't you just go and fix your skate, fix yourself, fix your face, and come back and <laughs> try that again. Um, so, yeah, so that was, uh, that was my addition. Fortunately, they, I guess they thought, well, this guy's crazy. We we'll might as well hire, hire this guy. That's funny. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I went on to be a part of the original German company, uh, which opened in 1988. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a really amazing experience. It was really hard, um, but it was really an amazing experience because it was such a big deal at Germany at the time. They built mm-hmm. that brand new theater. Um, it was all these awesome people in the cast. And so it was, it was a really amazing journey for me. I did the show for a year and then I moved on to other things. Um, I actually went on tour and then I got a call to do the national tour um, in the United States. And that was in, I believe it was 1989, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. 80, yeah. 89. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, and I played Electra on the national tour um, for a year again. Mm-hmm. So now, that's how did, you, the how did you first find out about Starlight? How did I first find out? So I was living in Germany at the time. I was doing Cats in Hamburg, and the mm-hmm. same producer, Fritz Kurtz, um, right. produced Starlight Express in Germany. Um, and so I knew Starlight was coming long, uh, way ahead of time. As soon as they announced that Starlight was going to be doing. Um, since they announced they were going to be doing it, I, I was aware of it and I'd seen it in London and I thought, oh my God, I would love to play Electra. That would be so cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I knew it. That's how I found out about it. So well, I knew I about it. it long, long in advance. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you had an, an awesome audition. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it got worse actually from there because I fell again um, when I tried it again a second time and I fell and I, and I felt, and I slid, I don't know how I did this. I slid underneath the, the panel's table and my skate got caught in their like electronic wires. <laughs> 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 I just remember Arlene Phillips looking over the table and being, saying like, um, maybe you should just take your skates off and we'll just hear you sing or something. <laughs> 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 <That's funny. laughs> oh my gosh i don't it's funny because i i don't think uh, did you ever ever actually then then do the cartwheel no i never did the cartwheel. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what possessed me to even try the cartwheel um yeah okay that happened <laughs> that's too funny that's too funny <laughs> And so, so you, you get you get the show they call how did you find out what did they do they call you or how long was it before they do call. So I don't remember when the auditions were exactly. I can't remember the exact dates of the auditions, but I happened to be with some friends traveling in Sweden. Um, and um, I think it was, it was Christmas time when I found out. And I got a call um, from, oh gosh, I'm so bad with names. Sabina, I forget her name. Um, yeah, Sabina Groman. Yes, that's it, Sabina Groman. Yes, good for you. Yes. Um, and the weird thing about that was that I was with a friend, um, Ferdinand Lundau, who also auditioned for Electra, who was in Cats with me. 
And the two of us were together and she called to offer me the part, which means he didn't get the part. Mm. And so it made for a really awkward night. Mm. Um, but of course, for me, it was a, a, a really cool night. Um, but it was very awkward. <laughs> so, you, you, so you get the call and you start rehearsals. What was the first day of rehearsals like? So I know oh. we were in Hamburg. We did the Hamburg Studios. Oh, that's right. We did Hamburg Studios. Did we rehearse in Hamburg Studios? Yes, we did. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. So so all I remember from rehearsals were the warm-ups. And remember the warm-ups? And we did it to George Michael's Faith album, I think mm -hmm. it was, every morning. And I remember I will be a father figure. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> in in uh, warm up with uh, Ilsa and Void, mm. um, it was intense, man. Uh, hard warm ups, and then we did skate trials and skate yeah. training. Um, it truly was like boot camp. It was, um, but really fun because we were just having so much. Uh, we were just all of us were so into it at the time, and and you know we were young. <laughs> yeah, oh, hello. Yeah, we were young. And well, we both we both did went through that process together in Volcom because uh, I was you were Electra and I was one of the the covers, the swings. Right, right. And, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so we we so it was a very exciting time. I remember a lot of times we'd have photographers coming in, uh, taking pictures, trying to really make a bit making it a big deal, which it was a big deal. Right. But a lot of a lot of blisters, a lot of uh, <laughs> falling down, a lot of padding. Yes. A lot of wrapping up of the feet and yes. injuries, and some people, a lot of people came, and a, a few people left during rehearsals. So, how hard was it for you to? Was it the was the choreography hard for you? Was what was the hardest thing for you during the rehearsal process? To be honest, the hardest thing for me was figuring out who. Electra was. I mean, I know obviously this, you know, the, the description of who Electra was and how he fits into the narrative of Starlight Express, but how to make Electra mine. Um, I'd only seen it in London and I don't remember who I saw in London. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just remember being sort of like insecure about whether I was creating a strong enough character in Electra the whole time like well that was I was I really doing it well enough um but then I started as rehearsals progressed started getting feedback that I was doing a really good job which was kind of odd at the time when I when I think about it because I was I remember thinking okay what are they seeing that I'm not feeling mm -hmm. um it was kind of a, a weird experience but so that was my main my main concern during rehearsals I mean the, the skating I sort of took to that pretty naturally. Um, and I was, you know, constantly trying to treat to myself new tricks. Um, and the choreography was fine. It just was being that character mm. and trying to embody it fully and um, which is with as much authenticity as I could. Well, what did you do to actually get to that place? Or oh, did you? That place where, okay, I have my character, I'm solid in the character, and I'm comfortable performing this character. I know what my goal is with it. And... Yeah, I think I think it did, that didn't really happen for me until after we open, when I could sort of relax into it and, and without um, the pressure of so many um, eyes on me about getting it right, and myself, my own pressure about getting it right. I think for me, honestly, I sort of, and I think this is the case for a lot of actors, um, I sort of, sort of really um, melted into it as the after the show opened, and I had time to sort of figure out my moments, figure out who I was, figure out who I was in relation to the other characters, mm -hmm. and really um, sort of flex my wings and expand, and um, without the pressure of time of like you know a, an opening night coming. Yeah, you know this show, this show there was so much to be considered. Um, putting this show together, I know each character, you know, like Electra. Uh, and Rusty, Papa, and Pearl, and all the other characters just, you know, first of all, you try to get your character, get that right, but then you have the geography, you have the stage, because uh, Bochum stage is one of the most massive stage stages that they that we had. Right. So there were so many variables to consider. And so it's like when I do roles, sometimes when I'll do a role, I'm, it's, I'm just considering, okay, what are my moments? 
right. and my relationship and my background. I spend most of my time doing that and focusing on that. And then, yeah, the staging comes, placement, if there's geography, that comes. But Starlight was just a whole, for me, was a different beast for me. And yeah, so, totally. Now, you've done other shows. Mm-hmm. How does it compare to other shows you've done? Uh, well, Starlight is, is in a class of its own, obviously. Well, maybe not obviously, because of the roller skates, right? And so there's, there's nothing like that in sort of the musical theater canon that even comes close to it. Like, so like you said, like the mechanics of being on eight wheels and being on eight wheels on a stage with, uh, I forget how many we had on the national tour, I want to say like 22, but uh, in Germany, I think we had 26 people. Um, right. Like, I think that... That alone, like you said, makes it so unique and so uh, much more challenging. I mean, obviously, you know, you know how it was like once we got comfortable, it was like we didn't even have skates on. Um, but the mechanics of that never went away. Like we still always have to be really precise when we're skating in trains, skating in the bowls, doing the choreography, doing the races. Mm-hmm. And so that element of the show always made it um, unique and dynamic. Now, on your first, uh, I don't know, some some of us don't remember the first show. I don't remember my first show on, but do you remember your first show, what that was like? Yes, I do remember my first show. <laughs> you didn't do the car- no cartwheel this time, right? I didn't do a cartwheel. No, but I do remember opening night, I fell in ACDC. And that was like the worst thing that could have possibly, I don't even remember when I fell or how I fell, but I do remember falling in ACDC. And being like, holy shit, I actually fell. Um, yeah, so I do remember that. I mean, the opening night show was such a blur. There was so, it was such a big deal. Like there was all these people and paparazzi and like, it just was crazy. Um, and then I fell. So that's like, it's like, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. So how, I know that uh, um, during the show, it built up the first year. Uh, you stayed for that the first year, then you had left. Right. I, I did the same thing, and then I, I went back later on. But when I when I left the show, uh, it was just like any other show. We were putting it up. We and I didn't know it was going to become what it became. Right. Right. And so when when did you find out that the show in Bochum? Oh my gosh, it's it, it's it's doing pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, I think just from hearing about the show still having staying power year after year after year, then it's like, you know, suddenly it's like there's a 10 year anniversary and it's like, whoa, that show's been running for 10 years. That's crazy. (laughs) Right. And and then it just keeps going and going and going. And then there's like a 20 year anniversary and it's like, what? I mean, it just, it's really mind numbing to think that that show is still running all these years later. I mean, I can't even, I, I mean, it's something I can't even wrap my head around how it's been able to have such staying power. Yeah. I remember when I went back, I went back in uh, 90, right after the U.S. tour, I went back. They asked me to go back there. Renee and I went back. Right. And I remember before we went there, Martin Booth, we were stayed in, in contact with Martin Booth. Oh, cool. And he had sent us a postcard with a picture of him, you know, and Starlight Express, his character. Oh, you know, I remember like those. Yeah, and I thought, my those. gosh, and he says, yeah. yeah, we're doing great. The fans are incredible. They're crazy, incredible. And like he would say, outrageous. He said, they're outrageous. And then, it, oh, and then I went there, and he was right. The fans were amazing. And I saw that there was a major, uh, it was a major show now. Because when we, I left, they were hoping – that they wouldn't go bankrupt. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then turn into this thing that now they just celebrated, I think they celebrated what 30, 30 years or 31 years. 30 years, years. yeah. Something just, like that. It's just mind-boggling. It, it really is. is mind-boggling. It is. Now I know you did you did Germany and then you did the US tour. We did yes. that together. Yes. And what are, what is what are some of your uh lessons, if any, lessons you took from the show that you still draw on now, if any? Oh, that's so interesting. Wow, that's a really interesting question. Well, I don't know if you know this, but now I'm a clinical psychologist. I went back to school and got a PhD. So um, I, I'm not a full-time performer anymore. Um, I guess I guess one of the things that, I've took, that, that I took from my creative career um, was that when I transitioned to going back to school and, and sort of working on my PhD, I realized that at the beginning of my journey with school that I kind of thought I had to put my sort of creative self aside to be in order to do this academic pursuit thing. Um, 
But I realized along the, my journey, and that was a long journey, it took me 15 years to get my PhD. Um, not, not totally 15 years, but all through, I started from when I was in Vegas, which, oh, I forgot Vegas. I did Vegas too. That's right. That's <laughs> <I forgot laughs> Vegas. Right. So when I did the Vegas company, I decided to go back to school. And so from that moment it, until I got my PhD, it took 15 years. But um, I, so I realized that, uh, as time went on that my creativity was a gift that I had to draw on with my academic pursuits um, and was part of the reason why I was successful at um, yeah, getting my PhD and the kinds of work that I did. Well, it's cool. I mean, I know you had went and gotten your PhD. Congratulations on that. And obviously, it's not an easy task. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I know, I know a couple of my, uh, I work with uh, students. A, lot, a couple of my students are, are clinical psychologists and therapists. And, and so uh, I, I just grateful for you guys. Grateful so much. And thank you for going to that work. Now, I can imagine, I know. Uh, me with the profession that I'm in because I'm a, I'm a teacher. I teach martial arts. I've been doing it for 20 years. Right. And I still do acting, but I'm not full time. I have a full time business. But my ability, my ability, my acting, my ability to present has been such an important factor of my ability to communicate to mm -hmm. some of my students who are three and a half years old all the way up through to our mature adults. Right. And so it's helped me a lot because I'll speak one on one. And then I also do speaking in groups. So sometimes as much as, you know, several hundred, if not about a thousand people at a time. So my performance comes in. Now, it sounds like that your your ability to present yourself and speak from your experience as talent, as an artist, uh, may be helping you also in your work that you're doing now as a clinical psychologist. Oh, yeah. It's pretty funny. So I'm always bringing my, you know bringing the pizzazz with me, um, so to speak. <laughs> so like I'll say to my colleagues, I do lots of group therapy. I work at the v uh, VA hospital, Veterans Administration Hospital here in Tacoma, Washington. And, um, you know, I, I do lots of groups where I'm standing up and presenting um, like a depression group or anxiety group or a couple skills group or something. And, you know, I'll say to my colleagues, I'm going to do my group. It's showtime. And they just laugh. It's like, well, because I realize it's like it's all performance. Like if I'm if I'm standing in front of people and teaching them about their mental health challenges, about the signs and symptoms, about how to treat and how to minimize the impact of mental health problems. Um, I have to present it in a way that engages people. And so my skill as a performer really comes into play. And I think it sort of sets me apart from my colleagues who don't have that performance background. Yeah. And I would also imagine that you're almost like fearless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty authentic in the room and I just sort of, I don't know. I just, I just go for it, and I love people, and I, and I, because of my performing arts career, I like traveling the world and seeing all kinds of people and working with all different kinds of people. I'm really comfortable and really can go there with people um, because I've been with all sorts of people throughout my life. And so, yeah, in the room, I am pretty fearless. Um, I'm also a national consultant for the VA hospital. I, uh, my sort of my forte is couples therapy, and so I go around the country, and I'm co-presenting and supervising people across the country as well. That's incredible. That's amazing. Congratulations on all that. That's awesome. Thanks. Great work. Sounds like a, a passion for you to do that. Yeah, it is. I mean, my mom is a, is a nurse, and so she's always been a helper, and I think I sort of followed in my mom's footsteps in that regard. Um, honestly, when I went back to school, I wasn't sure what the hell I was going back to school for. I just felt like... Um, I was reaching the end of the road with my performing career and I got injured in the Fosse rep class in New York and it was bad. And so I just thought I, this train is coming to an end and I got to re redefine myself. And so um, I've always been interested in helping people. And so it just, it's not a surprise that I'm a clinical psychologist. Wow, that's awesome. So I know a lot of a lot of alumni are watching this. And what I found that this this podcast has turned into is almost like I know it has been for me and also the other some of the other alumni have also have uh, uh, shared this as well as almost like a healing process for them. And there were things that happened along the way in life, just life mm. and us speaking and talking and looking at each other now because we were we were uh, young, but of course, yes, we I'm were. not. This, this is the youngest I'll ever be, <laughs> and tomorrow I'll be. But uh, uh, 
uh, but they they are saying that it's um, just reminiscing and reflecting, especially with each other, has been really uh, uh, helpful for them, for many of them. Now, what would you say? I always want to like to give you guys the last word. What would you say to the fans, to the alumni around the world that are listening to this and they're reminiscing, but they're also looking at the now, what they're doing right. now, and then how they're looking into the future as they move forward. So what would you say to them? I would say, I would just like to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone who embraced Starlight Express um, in times past and times current um, in the way that they have. I mean, I, I do agree that sort of like the fan base, even in the first year, was like something I'd never experienced in all of my performing career, that people connected with us on stage in ways that were so beautiful and so profound um, that I really, I'm appreciative, the, appreciative of that and grateful that um, so many people embraced the work that we were doing and the art that we were creating um, in Starlet Express. And so that I'm eternally grateful for. And I'm also really, really amazingly grateful for all the people that I connected with in the years that I performed in Starlet Express. I, we worked with just phenomenally talented people. And I think about all the people that inspire me to this day and all the people who've changed my life that I worked with in my years in Starlight Express. And I'm always eternally grateful for that. Um, so that's what I would say. I, pre I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate the work that you're doing now and loved you as Electra. And I know uh, um, Michael Denby, I spoke to Michael Denby. His, oh, his, you know, Michael his, Denby. Well. They all send <laughs> their love to every other alumni, but he definitely mentions you and, and the love that he had for you and uh, and so uh, but i'm glad everything's going well what other things you're doing that you have a passion for are you still performing it sounded like you were uh, re in rehearsals yes i'm in rehearsals for lots of things um so yeah so um since i moved here to tacoma to tacoma i've gotten really involved in the theater scene here so I've done some community theater. I've done some choreographing. At the moment, I'm in the middle of working with a small dance school here. It's called Tacoma Urban Performing Arts Center, um, Tupac. And it is a school that was created by a friend of mine from New York, Claire Eldridge. She's a dancer. Um, and it is designed in the tradition of Dance Theater of Harlem to provide an opportunity for young kids of color to have access to classical ballet arts. And so, they, last year, we put on our first Nutcracker. We called it the Urban Nutcracker. And I choreographed part of the, um, the first act. And I played Drosselmeyer for this production. So I'm in the rehearsals for our second year of doing that. And I also work with the Performing Arts Center here in Tacoma. And they are, we're about to open uh, a production of Shakespeare in Love, the play. And um, I choreographed the ballroom scenes for that, the Elizabethan dance scenes. And... Um, I'm also getting ready to fly to LA next week because I've got an acting gig uh, <laughs> with the through the through the VA hospital, which is really interesting. Um, they hired me as an actor um, to reshoot some of their clinical vignettes for the couples therapy that I do, and then in March I'm going to be directing and choreographing a production of Chorus Line here. That's awesome. Now, if people so, want to find out more about you, where could they go? Oh God, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm kind of on. I, I mean, I have a Facebook page, um, and that's that's like really my only social media presence. I'm really embarrassed to say I don't even have Instagram. Um, so, <laughs> I guess you know you can find me on Facebook. You can email me at ericfalsell at mail dot com. It's my first and last name. Um, yeah, I guess that's the best way. Now, also with the the community work that you're doing, the dance project. Uh, that they they have a website, right? Oh, they do. Yeah, it's um, Tupac.org. Tupac like the Tupac Shakur. Um, yeah. Dot org. Yeah. Very cool. So I'll, I'll make sure everyone that's watching and listening, the link's gonna be right on this page. And uh, Eric, I'm gonna make sure uh, I stay up to date with what you're doing. I'll just follow what you're doing and whatever you share, I'll share here on this page. Keep all the alumni and the fans cool. up to date. And when when the show opens. Share that, and I'll share that here. So if anyone that's on the West Coast in Washington, they can have word of it. At least they can share it on the socials because some, some of the alumni are really active there. So fan right. alumni, just share the work that uh, Eric is doing. And so he's busy w working it. 
and uh, and he hit <laughs> or something like that offline which is which is respect respect buddy uh, uh, man i love you thank you so much renee is actually love right you now. too she's teaching and coaching right now so she sends her love to you and, oh, awesome. and she's doing great we're doing great but thank you so much for thank taking you time. Spend for thinking us. of me, this old guy in Tacoma. <laughs> uh, we're, all, we're all young, and I hang out. I hung out with my grandfather, who is ninety-eight, and he, wow. he called me a kid. So we got to hang out with people in their eighties and nineties. Yes. Well, uh, Eric, you have a great day. You too, Peter. Great seeing you, buddy. Thanks again. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Peace. Thank you, everyone, for joining me on this episode of Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Next week, I will get together with another alumni. Be sure to subscribe. You can subscribe right here on the website at starlightexpress.club. We are definitely on the iTunes and Stitcher, and we're looking to get on the other platforms, so make sure you check there, subscribe there, and stay connected. If you are a Starlight alumni, please be sure to reach out to me if you would like to be on the podcast. Would love to hear your stories and share your story with the Starlight Express fans and other alumni. Look forward to sharing with you next week. Everyone, have a great day.